All right, guys, another stupid day. <laughs> All right, so today we are cutting out our inside window openings. It's a little bit different than what we've done in the past. This is the whole wall panel, and then it'll be just trimmed out like this. The window will kind of be inset into that opening there. To get our corners here, we just set our inside window trim, which is sitting right over there and we just set it on here and traced our rounded edges so that the rounded edges on the this trim piece will match the rounded edges on the piece of the window that goes in here. All right, so next is routing the edges of this opening and I'm using my cordless DeWalt router. Now Ashton is just gonna smooth over the sides with the sander. So right now I'm just staining all the cabinets where you're gonna see it. So this is gonna be in the master bedroom against the wall to the left when you come in through the doorway. So we're going with a white stain. It'll look real nice, real finished, and we've got the other cabinet right here. One of our wall panels that are going to be in the master bedroom. You see the window cut out right there. And all these right here are cabinets that are going to be in the master bedroom as well. This is like all this right here is basically all for the master bedroom. Bed frame stuff. But yeah, it's going great. All right, guys, my mom and I are about to build another cabinet. Yeah. Mom said it, this is a finished cabinet. <laughs> All right guys, so what I'm about to do is route the edge of this. This is going to be a uh, wall panel that goes in the master bedroom. It's going right underneath these panels that actually go over where a window goes so this panel goes right underneath that one and meets all the way to the floor i'm we're going to actually make the seam more pronounced but still give it a nice finished look if you can see there is going to be some kind of interlocking system like this so when the two panels meet and you've got the seam right there you're not going to see through that seam at all to line up pretty good. Very slightest little slope right on the edge here. I'm gonna go ahead and route that and that's going to kind of give the seam a nice finish. All right, guys. So today is actually our last day in this bay. It's currently scheduled for someone else to use it, but fortunately we get to be parked right outside of here and we can continue the conversion out there. This video is gonna be more of a recap of just things that we've done on this bus that haven't made it into a video yet. We're gonna put it out right now. Here we go. This right here is the air conditioning unit. This is gonna come out and this is either gonna be a bay for our generator because it's all vented. It's got a vent on the floor in there or this is gonna be where we're gonna put a mini split system. We have not decided fully yet on that. Yeah. All right, so we have now taken this out and look at guys, look at all the room we've got. This would be perfect for a mini split but we're just not sure if that's what we're gonna do yet. But it'd also be perfect for a generator. We've got the floor venting down here, total airflow, and you got the vents right here. All right, guys, so what we're doing right now is we're building a platform down here for our 
gray water tank to sit on so that it's actually up so the water can drain down properly. There's a gap right there. That's gonna be access to where our water pump will be. And right here at this end, we're gonna cut a hole and we're gonna probably slide in like a, a larger PVC pipe where we can store our sewer pipes and stuff like that to keep this area all clean. And then what I'm gonna do in a minute here is I'm gonna carpet this whole thing so it looks nice. Our water tank stand. Look at that. What are you doing? Come on, say it. Ervis, say, this is the bus life. Ervis. We're gonna be installing our black water tank and we're gonna show you guys how we're doing it. So what we're gonna to have to do first is we're actually gonna to have to remove this gas shock. I'm gonna to have to use an offset toilet flange. The hole for the toilet's literally right here. So this is gonna to have to come down like that and come down into our tank. I'm gonna build the cage that goes around my black water tank. I'm not gonna be doing any welding, so everything's gonna be bolted together. Now I found this stuff at Home Depot in the electrical department. This was much cheaper than actually buying steel angle iron, and I think it's gonna be just as strong. <laughs> All right guys, so I have the frame built and it took a little bit of planning. Some things that were unexpected. One, this is about exactly five feet long and my main support was 10 feet and I cut it right in half. I had some of this aluminum angle iron stuff. So I've got it like this. I basically just cut to notch in here. This brace is not supporting any weight. It's just to hold these two together and it's to keep the tank from sliding around in there. These brackets, they will mount on the side, something like that. All right guys, so Isaiah's on the other side and he is going to take a crescent wrench and hold the nut for me as I tighten this bolt. have the brackets all in place. Can you tell it's hot here? I mean, that's the only dry spot on my shirt. It's actually not as much hot as it is humid, but that's Florida for you. And we always pick Florida to do our bus conversions in for some strange, odd reason. What we're doing right now is we're just tightening everything down and then we're gonna go ahead and slide our tank in, make sure everything fits right. So, and then I've got my piece here that goes like this, like that. That basically just keeps this stable and stout and keeps it from ever trying to slide out. Good job. So Erebus is our cleaning crew today, I guess. She came over and saw this big mess in here in her little two-year-old mind is like, that needs to be cleaned up. She asked me if I could find her a broom. So I found her a broom and she just came out here and started sweeping. She's already cleaned all this out of there. Wow, you're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Ashton's doing this a little strange. Like I said, that was a little strange the way you did that. <laughs> D has come. Did you get yourself a little stuck? No. Today we're gonna talk about our perimeter lighting that we're gonna do. And this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, really on our last bus, but this is something we're implementing into this bus. And basically what it, what it is, is we're gonna have 
perimeter lighting that goes around the entire bus and we kind of call it security lighting or whatever where there's a couple switches you could flip inside the bus and it will illuminate the entire perimeter of the bus so we're going to be putting like a light up here an led spotlight up here we're going to be putting a light bar over here and then another led spotlight over there we're going to be doing that on both sides and we're, we will be doing some lights in the front and on the back ashton's got one lit up right now so we found these on amazon by a company called nylight i'll put the link for this kit in the video description it really was inexpensive and i'll show you what it comes with basically it comes with all your mounting hardware your wiring your brackets it comes with two spotlights like this which will go on the the side front and the side back of the bus and then it comes with this light bar that will go in the middle of the bus right up over there this in here gosh all right guys our first lights installed all right guys so right now we are cutting out the bay window this is the bunk room right in here all right window opening number one is cut in this uh black aluminum is weird you almost get lost in like okay what am i seeing guys we got our engine started and we are getting ready to move the bus out of here so we've been able to use this warehouse now for I think a month and two weeks if I'm not mistaken I know some of you have asked to hear the engine run 